our next poet, Maureen Blevins. Thank you. I wouldn't call myself a poet, but I do some writing. I'm a very avid photographer as well, and I did publish my first children's books. There you go. The first poem is called Chances Are. Chances missed and chances taken. A guy named Chance bags my groceries in Rayleigh's. He wasn't born in Reno or even in Nevada. What did his mother want him to be when he grew up, when she named him Chance? A cowboy? A gunslinger? A grocery store manager? Does he drive a Mustang? Does he gamble? Are there other chances in this world? How many chances do we get? How many do we take? How many do we miss? Walking on this balance being called life? Every step a chance will fall. Every step a chance we won't. Every step a chance. <laughs> this poem I wrote recently, I've lost a lot of people in my family over time, um, quite recently a few. And it just makes you question your own mortality. So I call it questions. What is love? What is life? What is happiness? What is strife? People come and people go. The ones we love, the ones we know. Life goes on. What is false? What is true? I'm most alive when I'm with you. But now you're gone, like a dream of the night. I have left in me no more fight. Life goes on. I eat, I sleep, I wake, I cry. Be it a long, a short, or an absent goodbye, it's always too soon when someone must die. Life goes on. Will anyone miss me? Will anyone weep when it's my time to sleep the eternal sleep? I will miss my children, my lovers, and friends, and pray it is true that we will meet again. But for now we're all here, let us dance in the rain, forgetting our sorrow, our fear, and our pain. For now we're together, even though we're the last. So dance that dance, raise your glass, or this too shall pass. Life goes on. You're here. You're here. And I'm going to end on a lighter note. <laughs> if fish could fly and flowers could sing, I would gather an armful of colorful birds to keep in a vase on my dining room table. If the sky was green and the grass were blue, raindrops would be violet and pink and orange and green and puddles would be full of rainbows. I think I would leave the clouds fluffy white, like little bunny tails hopping happily across the sky. If strawberries were straw colored, but blueberries were still blue, we would have to invent red or use rose petals for icing on our cakes. But roses would not be red, and dewberries would be little rainbows. Elderberries would never get old, gooseberries would make us giggle, blackberries would taste like licorice, and we should have pineapple berries, don't you think? And we would all ride on horses and live in grass-covered cottages and dine on nothing but berries and pettifores with baskets of birds as centerpieces for the table. Next up, we have our videographer, Mr. Dwayne Walton. Okay, poetry isn't exactly my, my forte, but uh, give me a chance and I can come up with something. Um, I've always considered my writing to be an exorcism. And since this is the season, this one I came up with several years ago, it's called, I call it exorcism. <clears throat> if I put you on paper, will you leave me alone? I'll put you on display. Please haunt me no more. Why don't you find someone new 
or among the endless mass. I'm sure someone else would yield to their mind, you'll attach. You can feast on their fear, as you've done with mine. Fly in the face of reason, skeletal fingers, pick minds. Go commit your mental rapes, yet I'd like to know. If they put you on paper, will you leave them alone? And this next one, once upon a time when we were known as Right on Manuka, somebody came up with the idea of a literary themed haunted house for Halloween, and I was charged with coming up with an urban legend to recite. Unfortunately, the whole literary haunted house thing fell through, but I held on to this, and I've kept it, and I dug it up from the grave for tonight. This one's titled, Suburban Legend. This tale I must uncover, how the cousin of a friend, of a friend of a brother, met his fateful end. It happened one dark night on this date one year ago. He thought he'd be all right. No need to take it slow. He thought he'd have a drink as he popped the top, but he didn't pause to think. Didn't know when to stop. One by one they'd go in moonlight's eerie glow. Triple shot mocha espresso. He drank three in a row. He had no way to see the inevitable distress from triple shot times three, under a full moon no less. His flesh began to crawl, his heart commenced to pound. His pupils became real small, his eyes darted around. It quickly came to a head, the tension built within. He was carried off by dread and burst right out of his skin. He skittered down the street as fast as frenzied bones can, and everyone he would meet yelled out, That's a skeleton, man! <laughs> they all gave chase and became a mad throng, all in a desperate, desperate race to expunge what didn't belong. A musician making tracks soon arrived upon the scene and proceeded to play Yaki Sax, better known as the Benny Hill theme. Oh, <laughs> he may have ran to parts unknown, or he may be running still. His bones were never, show, never again shown, never again to send a, a chill. My torrid tale is now through, and you can say you know what horrible fate awaits you for drinking three in a row. <laughs> okay, this last one is more Christmas themed, but it's real short. So, one of our writing assignments in the group was to come up with our own variation of the night before Christmas. And this is what I came up with. Just weeks before Christmas, and all through the mall, I went searching for Teen Mom, and didn't find it at all. But no need to fear, or worry my head. I found the first season at Walmart instead. <laughs> okay, up next is our co-founder and co-leader, Denise Baron Unland. The goddess. Yes. Denise Baron Unland, and I'm a local uh, writer and editor, and I am not a poet. Uh, I think I have two poems to my name, and one was badly written on purpose, so I didn't bring that one tonight. The one that I did bring uh, was one that actually appeared on Holly Coop's blog, and she refined it a little bit. By the way, it's hollycoopbooks.com. A few years ago, I had created my own blog tour by reaching out to friends that I knew who had blogs, and the whole point was some cross-marketing. So I would write pieces that had to do with my Bryony series, but they would also fit onto the themes of other people's blogs. So when people came to my blog, I pointed them to somebody else's with the goal that they would also browse around. What was interesting for me is that I had to take my own theme that I was writing and write it in different ways. So uh, we did something that was baseball themed, a baseball themed Q&A. I did 
uh, 10 Reasons Why Gothic Fiction Still Rocks. I wrote an essay on social justice, all within the theme, and Holly is a poet, so I wrote a poem. And it is called, On the Other Side of the Veil. Never dreamed I'd wind up here, split from you and yet so near. I didn't want to leave, I don't want you to leave, but we're no longer clear, for I'm on the other side of the veil. The day we spoke our vows aloud, before my world, below our God, you stood before me and knew where to find me. When the time came to kiss me, I was on the other side of the veil. The vines that kept us face to face, wound and tangled in their embrace, grew greater than me, choked off our we. Now I take up all the space in the hazy place on the other side of the veil. Your music surrounds me all around. I hear the notes, but not the sound of your breathing. Where is it, love? Increase it by an octave and assure me you abound. Or will we meet on the other side of the veil? But the moonlight casts a fearful sight of a beast streaking through the night. His eyes are wild, he smells like blood. He's nothing like the man I loved. But perhaps the senses fail on the other side of the veil. Time is stopped, the petals are dropped. The staircase winds like the cloth, winding me as I wind where you doth play a dirge. You cannot see me, you cannot hear me, you cannot feel me, you cannot perceive me at all from where I eavesdrop near the wall on the other side of the veil. Thank you. And next up is a much better poet than I am, Timothy Barron. Good evening. My name is Timothy Barron, and I I'm like Halloween, I only seem to pop up once a year. <laughs> you know, the, the interesting thing about poetry, like if you were to say, what's poetry? Someone would say, oh, it's got style, it's got rhythm, it's distinct, you can tell the difference. Yeah, I guess. I, I think the interesting thing about poetry is, poetry is like the cousin to music. In, in a few words, you can say a lot, you tell a whole story, you kind of feel that emotion a little bit. And, and what I mean by that, I just want to give an example because I could say, I could name off a bunch of poets, right? Emily Dickinson and uh, Edgar Allan Poe and, Poe and uh, Robert Frost. And, right. But if I was to open up most of these in, in front of a crowd and, and start reading it, no, no one would get it, right? They're, they're older, they're dusty, they belong in a book on a shelf somewhere. Um, but if I walk up to someone and I say, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish, this fish has a little star, and this fish has a little car, say what a lot of fish there are. Well, I just told you a whole thing. There's a, a whole lot of fish, and we know that they're all a little bit different, and we know that some of them now drive. <laughs> and, and, and it sticks with us. It, it's got that rhythm and that, that rhyming and that poem. So usually I write a little bit darker. This was something I wrote in 2017. Uh, not a high point in my life. That's for a whole other time. Uh, and there's not a title to it. I, I purposely left it untitled because we all have different lives. We all have different emotions, and if you get something out of it, great. Um, and if you don't, great. That's not the point of it, right? The good things that are coming are impossible to describe. I promise you, it's not a lie. So get excited, jump in the air, because good things are finally here. The ship has sailed off the coast, endless butter for your toast. A comfy jacket to keep you warm, a big umbrella in the storm. To keep you dry and very safe, treat this life like an unlocked gate. The ground is there below your feet, so go ahead and start to creep. Around the grass and down the hill, and say hello to Jack and Jill. And on your way out to the sea, don't forget to wait for me. 
My bag is packed, I'm out the door, I heard a rumor, good things are in store. For me and you, and you dear reader, I hope I can make you a believer. By these words I like to write, I hope they give you some insight. I hope they help you forge a path to see the world and then come back. With wisdom much beyond your years and good thoughts in between your ears. Happy, smiling, always funny, did I mention good things are coming? Yes.